This week on 3D Printed Soup, we're going to hunt ourselves down some Nexus 6s in celebration of our 1000th subscriber. Let's do this. Hello fellow makers and welcome back to 3D Printed Soup. This week we are celebrating something. We have hit the 1000 subscriber on our channel. And as everyone all keeps telling me, the terse 1000 subscribers on our channel are the hardest to get. So we have threw that milestone. It's been a while and I'm very, very glad. So thank you so much for everyone who has subscribed, liked, left comments, given encouragement. You guys are absolutely fantastic. And yeah, as a community, the 3D printed suit community is absolutely brilliant. Love you guys loads. And yeah, thank you so much for supporting me over the last couple of years. It's been difficult through lockdown and through COVID and through other things that have happened, not to mention adopting a two-year-old, which is a, a difficult challenge in itself. But still, we stayed the course, 1,000 subscribers. Yay, let's get on to 10,000. So yes, like, subscribe, stay with the channel and thank you so much for your support. Now, to celebrate this, I promised I'd do a special print and I have printed Deckard's Sidearm from Blade Runner. Now, Blade Runner has been one of my favourite films since I saw it when I was about 12 years old and it was at a friend's house and his dad used to go and do business in Japan a lot. So he had a lot of cool tech. He had Dolby surround sound. He had a Nikam digital stereo TV in widescreen. I'd never seen a film in widescreen before. I'd never seen a film in surround sound before. So yeah, watching that film was a properly important moment in my film education when I was a kid. And yeah, I loved watching that film and I loved the props in it, especially his sidearm. This blaster, which is sort of a combination of World War II sidearm. It's got a rifle's firing pin in it. It's got a revolving cylinder inside it. And I found a really lovely print of it on Thingiverse. Thanks so much to the guys who've designed this. And after printing my Hellboy Samaritan last week, this is going to be another addition to my fantasy slash sci-fi sidearms collection. If you've got any ideas of the next guns you think I should print, whether it's Space 2001, thank you very much everyone who suggested that, or Fallout or anything else you can think of that I could print a sidearm from, please let me know in the descriptions below. And uh, yeah, I'll pick a few new ones and we'll do a whole month of just printing out really cool sci-fi and fantasy sidearms and weapons. So let's get on, print, paint and build ourselves a 3D printed Deckard Blaster. Let's give this a try. Right, with all the parts printed, time to remove the support material and get assembling. First things first, let's get the spring-loaded revolver cylinder in here. This thing's all spring-loaded to hold it in. We then got a little switch here, which is great. It glues in the back and just holds the revolving cylinder in place. So we're going to switch it back and pop the revolving cylinder in and out, which is a lovely design feature on this. Chuck the barrel on there. Now, all the way from one end of the barrel to the other, there is the firing rod. This thing basically runs the entire length of the gun. And screwing the uh, triggers on and a few of the gribblies. And there's the firing pin holder as well. With that done, let's put a few details on here. Screw on the butt plate. Then I'm gonna take this back off again once I've drilled the holes and I'm gonna get onto painting. But first of all, it's Prince Ammo. 
with the ammo printed, let's go spray over some white primer with some black gloss base paint. Put some lovely wood finishes on the gun grips, one on each side, and this thing's held together by real screws, which gives it a really nice feeling of weight. I love actually having real screws on a uh, 3D printed model, it feels very, very cool, and it gives it a lovely air of authenticity. Finally, put the butt plate back on. There we go, and then a little bit of dry brushing to give a lovely silver finish to it, and we are done. Let's have a look and see how our handiwork has come out. Okay, with the build finished, this thing has turned out really, really nicely. I love the feel of this thing. It's big, it's chunky, it feels like a very, very substantial firearm. In fact, it rivals the chunkiness of the uh, Samaritan Hellboy print I did last week. Check notes above for link. But yeah, this is great. The dry brushing has turned out really nicely. I spent a long time looking over... Uh, reference pieces and basically what colour it should be. A lot of people have done it very, very silver, but if you check out the actual original pictures of the actual firearm, it's very black and very dark. You can see the firing pin runs through the whole length of the gun, and uh, you've got the firing pin lifts up here, and you can actually pull that all the way up and slide it back, but um, because it's made out of PLA, I don't particularly want to do that because it's going to wear it out. So yeah, this is just purely a display piece. Um, but yeah, this has some really nice features in it. You can remove the underplate here and if you fancy it you can stick LEDs in here. It's got a nice little space for the mechanisms. You can make the whole gun light up with the red and green LEDs. I decided that I want to do that myself and you can also pull the trigger there if you want to basically set the trigger up properly. Me myself, I'm actually not going to bother with that. I just want this to look like a lovely display piece on the side. So yeah, I'm not going to bother wiring the triggers in and I'm not going to put any LEDs in myself. This is purely to sit on the side next to my other uh, sort of sci-fi firearms collections and look absolutely awesome. What I couldn't stop myself doing though is I couldn't stop myself from printing out several versions of this. I've done a PLA version here and I'm also doing a resin version as well. The resin version will come later but this is a lovely starting off point. You've got the what's called the screwdriver section there which is that sort of weird sort of pen shaped thing on the side. No one's ever quite sure what that actually came from but uh, it's a nice piece of gribbly to go on it. And you can open the side here and there is the revolving cylinder section. It's on a spring so it's all held in properly and you can remove all the bullets um, or shells if you want to call them and yet yeah, spins around really really nice It's got a lovely sort of mechanical feel to it with a spring-loaded mechanism Let's get a spare Bullet and yep, yeah, these just slip in perfectly. I mean look at that. It's a lovely print Came out very very nicely and the bronze paint on it with the silver it looks very very nice as well and gun metal that just pops in and it just Clips in like that and there you go this is a beautiful looking thing. I mean, the, the stock looks great. That, that um, wood paint has come out really, really nicely. The engraving on the edge there, who built it, uh, matches the one in the movie. It's even got the correct serial number at the front there. And yeah, I could just look at this thing all day. It's such a very, very nice piece of engineering. Thank you so much to the guys who actually designed this file. Links in the description below as always. 
Another thing I like about it as well is the fact that the firing pin runs all the way down the length of it. So if I just remove this screw here, you can choose to screw this in, but I thought, you know what, I'll give you a quick look at what it looks like inside. You then remove the end of the firing pin, and this runs all the way down the length of the gun. So just lift this section here. Just lift it carefully because I don't want to break this. So just very, very carefully. There we go. Firing pin goes all the way down, and you can see the firing pin goes to the end of the gun, from the barrel all the way back to the butt. And yeah, if you've got the time and the patience, you can basically nail all that together, or glue it all together with pins, and the whole thing, basically, you can pull the entire firing pin out and put it back in. As I say, this is PLA. I didn't use uh, a hardier um, plastic filament because I didn't need to. This is just purely a display piece. So pop it back in. That all goes there. Still up, goes up and down. Shut the end of the firing pin back on here. Like so. And just chuck the screw back in. Using my handy dandy iFitzek screwdriver. I'm not sponsored by them. Um, and there you go. You can see the firing pins all back in place again. It pops up and goes down. And it runs all the way to the end. You can see the little sp spike sticking out at the end of the barrel. So, yeah, um, I could just sit here and look at this all day. It's just such a marvellous piece of engineering. So, yeah, this is Deckard's Blaster from Blade Runner. It's a wonderful, wonderful gun. It's made up of so many different moving parts. I love the double triggers. I love the moving firing pin. It's absolutely amazing. So, yeah, I'm so happy with the way this has come out. It's chunky. It's got real screws in it. I mean, this thing's held together by proper metal screws. We give it a lovely weight. Some people also put um, metal inside it as well and sort of a metal rod all the way through it to actually give it a real, real feeling of weight. But I'm going to put this on a shelf and display it. So I don't think I need to do that. But uh, yeah, just the, uh, the heft of the thing's incredible. I love the fact that you can just pop out the... Uh, slugs here and yep just pull a bullet out pop it back in clip it closed pull out the firing pin put it back in clip clip bang and it's ready to hunt some nexus 6 replicants so yeah with this and lightsabers, I'm so grateful to 3D printing to just basically allow me to make things that back in the day, I could never dream of making this. I mean, I started out sort of in the mid 90s using foam to construct stuff, helmets and armor and things like that. But with 3D printing, it just takes it to the next level. You can make something out of foam that looks the part, but actually making something with working mechanical parts to it it's just sort of unbelievable future tech. And yeah, I can't wait to see where 3D printing goes in the future. I did spend some time printing out uh, some parts of it in resin. And I don't know if you can see this, but um, the actual level of detail on the resin, you can see the wonderful, wonderful um, calligraphy there, the Japanese uh, symbols and even the proper serial number there this thing came out really really nicely but resin's a bit heavy and a bit brittle sometimes so for my first go i think pla was a really good choice maybe in the future i'll print one out in resin maybe i'll even use some abs and make a proper hard wearing version of this gun but in the meantime yeah this is really really nice and i've enjoyed building it and painting it thank you so much to everyone who's liked and subscribed and thanks for continuing to watch the channel Remember to stay happy, stay safe, and the 3D printer that burns twice as bright prints half as long.